with me, y'all. Because you cared for me in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up. My heart, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price one day for me. Wait. Do you really love the Lord today? No! 
Lord. Put your hands together, everybody. You love the Lord. Woke you up this morning with a mind to come to the house of prayer. God, we love you. We magnify your name. Because you've been so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the City of Refuge, United Church of Christ. We are a ministry of restoration. We are intentionally radically inclusive, welcoming all persons regardless of race, color, ancestry, age, gender, sexual, or affectional orientation. We celebrate the Creator's diversity, we worship Christ, and we welcome persons from all faith paths which harmonize with the ministry of Jesus Christ. Reverend Dr. Yvette Flunder, presiding bishop of Refuge Ministries, the pastoral team, and entire congregation, thank you for worshiping with us today. There's one more thing I want to add here. We want to extend a warm welcome to those seminarians who are part of the Refuge in the City Immersion class. And I'd like to invite them to stand. So we'd like to give you, uh, if you could remain standing, if you don't mind, if you're willing and able, uh, we'd like to give you a warm City of Refuge uh, welcome and to all our visitors. Refuge, let's welcome our visitors. This is the place, now is the time, we are the people. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, we welcome you to the celebration of the body of Christ 
under the sound of Pentecost, where we are called to a living manifestation of unity that will heal the world. Come with us on this journey as we worship together, all our voices, all our faces, all our ways of being, a reflection of God's beautiful tapestry and diversity's symphony. practiced a white church planted in red dirt a midwestern boy with a tucked in shirt i converted not just to christianity but to an ideology an identity an idea a theology i was taught jesus died for the sins of humanity that his cross would demolish all hints of inequality that he cried out for unity in his last prayer at gethsemane and that this infallible book would bring all believers to harmony but across the street were the Nazarenes, and two blocks down were the Catholics, and a mile north, a church called Community, and east of that were more Baptists. I had this uncallous thought that if we couldn't have fellowship with those in other fellowships who were taught a little different, then we could at least befriend the Baptists who were baptized for the same reasons and under the same creeds and because of the same tree. But these Baptists weren't like the Baptists in our baptistry, washing away their sin. For though these Baptists shared our beliefs, they did not share our skin. We are born into a separated Sunday morning. The body of Christ is segregated past all warnings. The church looks more like a court and less like a courting. Trading the unified bride for stereotype judgments. The juries are sorting. The blacks from the white, the left from the right, the women from men, the sinners from sin, the traditional from the charismatic, the liberal from the dogmatic, the denomination from the non-denom, inevitably separating us from God. How did we get so far off from the truth that now a poor, dark-skinned, unattractive Israeli Jew would have better luck dying for our sins than fitting in on our pews. Are our views and traditions worth destroying the body of Christ's eternal commission, baptizing all nations in the damnation of our denomination's fraternal omission? We are omitting the ominous call to depart from the social roles and charts our stratified cultures impart. But it's time our churches look less like the demographic of a country club and more like that of a Walmart. Before the cross, all races and nations fit into two percentiles, God's chosen Israel and the unchosen Gentiles. Those who could enter in the temple and those exiled by its walls. But after the cross, the hostility built into that divider did fall. And now a new people are born. A a holy nation set apart from all who'd lived before. Within this borderless country, there are no Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, rich nor poor, Democrat nor Republican, Iraqi nor American, holy nor beautiful, polished nor tainted, Catholic nor Baptist, red nor brown, black nor white. There is only Christ, the miracle of a true life, the participants in a new creation. The old is gone, the new has saved us. We are the third race, neither Gentile or Jew. From death to life, we have all passed through. Our skin has not been removed, but our eyes have been renewed. Now you can see me and I can see you as more than a brand title, sinner or color, but as a father, mother, sister or brother. The church is universal, the university of diversity. She can teach the world how to live in harmony. The church is local, the locale for unity, unifying heaven and earth. We are the contrasted community. Our allegiance is not to a country, color or creed, but to the androgynous family born on that Roman tree. We will no longer be separated by our prejudices and bigotry, nor be segregated from those who think or look differently, but we'll embrace our body's beautiful diversity and we'll raise our voices for peace as God's extraordinary symphony. Just before we sing, I have the wonderful opportunity to make uh, the introduction of the newest member of our family. This is Anastasia 
Danielle Alana Harris. This is Khalil's baby girl and Lavetta's newest baby granddaughter. And she's sleeping through the experience, but she's gorgeous. And she look, 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 look. Everything we do, we do for her. Is that right? So welcome, Anastasia. Come on, Lavetta. I hear the sound of Pentecost. Come on, let's stand all over the house.
right. So we need a, a worship song, and then we'll go into our programming, right? Yes, and then um, we'll hear the first movement of the symphony today. I lift my hand and told of adoration to you. Sing. You came upon the throne, oh, you are God. so grateful for the spirit of worship and praise that's in this house right now. And no matter what it is that happened in your life since the last time we saw you, the one thing that I know is that God has been good to you. And perhaps you need to offer that word of testimony and affirmation to your neighbor. Say to your neighbor, God's been good to me. God has been good to me. God has been good. 
to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. In spite of whatever it is that may be the negativity and the struggle that you have in your life, God has been good to us. And we love God today more than anything. More than anything. It's a blessed privilege. When I look at this house today, I see what Pentecost really looks like. Pentecost is about diversity. Pentecost is about making room for all of us. About all of us being in the presence of God together. It's about unity. Hallelujah. It's about how God's spirit and the presence and power of God can show up sometimes in the most incredible ways through the most unexpected sources. The presence of God is in this house. I can feel it. It's tangible. It's palpable. And I'm expecting great things. As we're preparing our hearts for worship, earlier on the class, a refuge in the city was introduced to you. We have 21 of us this year from all sorts of churches and backgrounds and experiences and ministries. They're an incredible and beautiful group of brothers and sisters and siblings who have come together from all over the United States as far away as Pennsylvania and New York. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And then up close, folks that are here local in the Bay Area and roundabout, but with one mind and one purpose, we're going to share together in worship today the Jesus in you recognizes and loves the Jesus in me. And you're so easy to love. God bless you. And so we're going to have Carson to come and be our first speaker as the movement moves from one place to the other. Come on, Carson, and share with us. While Carson is coming, I want to acknowledge the presence also of Reverend Reginald Finley, yes. who is a friend and brother and son of the fellowship from way back. Wave your hand, sir, so the folks can see you. He didn't have that much gray hair when some of you saw him the last time, but it's good to have you here, Reverend. Get a little song in your heart. Get a little song in your heart. Amen. And then tell Charlene about it, all right? Come on, Carson, and share with us. Come on, let's receive Carson with a refuge welcome. Amen. So my reflection today is called, Get Back What You Were Told You Would Never Have. Yeah. Yesterday, Bishop Flunder and the Transcendence Choir were talking about, and modeling, how they have been able to get back or reclaim what they were told they would never have. Their love of God and their love from God. Yeah. So this is what I reflect on today. I don't know about you, but my reflections generally begin with questions. How exactly do you get back what you were told you would never have? When you may have never had it in the first place. How do you get back what you were told you would never have? When the trauma held in your body. is so loud that you can't find or hear your own voice, much less the still, small voice of God. How do you get back what you were told you would never have when you can't seem to unlearn the God of your father? When you wonder 
if you'll ever be able to grow into feeling capable. No matter how hard you try or how hard you pray. What do you do to get back what you were told you would never have? When the God of your understanding seems to default to the God of your father. Maybe for me, it isn't about getting anything back, but learning to claim for myself the God of my own understanding and the love of God and for God. Maybe I just have to be patient to claim that I am growing into feeling capable, even when I don't feel capable. I have observed many folks this week living in the love of God, truly living in the spirit of God, where their love of God and from God overflows to everyone around them. Maybe, just maybe, if it is possible for them, then it is possible for me. And maybe I, too, can claim that what I was told I would never have, the love of God, is possible. And so between each group of our reflectors, we're going to sing another chorus until it really seeps real deep into our spirits, all right? So go back to bind us together in your program book. You see it? And this time we'll say, mold us together. Mold us together, Lord. Mold us together with peace. church where the microphone is as short as me and in this pulpit I can fit in this pulpit I love it so my name is Pamela and I'm a Presbyterian minister and some of you all came to my church in Sacramento you sang at the cathedral yes and I your fingernails honey yes. I love it so it is so good to see you all my brothers and sisters yes so I'm a Presbyterian minister and I work in Episcopal Church but I preach like a Pentecostal so nobody really knows what to do with me oh woo, I'm unleashed I'm unleashed I'm at home I'm at home yes. <laughs> to my brothers and sisters in the class because whenever a vet's talking, I'm like, mm, yes, preach. And I'm like, in the class, I'm like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. So, mm. I need, I need to be, I need to be more Presbyterian, you know, because a Presbyterian, like a Baptist saying an amen is a Presbyterian going, hmm. hmm. So I know, I know, I need to be doing, hmm, hmm, hmm. So, I've known my sister for so long. We've we worked on our doctorates together. This woman married me. Yes, 
I am so proud of you and your ministry. I've seen, I think this is the third church that I've seen you move around. Oh, Lord, help me. Thank you. I'm at home. I know. I'm home. I'm home. Because I stand in this pulpit. I know what my sister went through. Because I had Yvette come and speak at one of my preaching conferences. And my mother had just died. And my sister helped me through that. And she told about the time of when you all ministered to her. When Mother Ruth passed over to the other side. And yet she is here with us, and we can all praise Jesus for that. And this section is called Binding. We are bound together, and I think of Mother George Jackson, my brother Enos. And that we are all surrounded by our cloud of witnesses. And this morning, I've been double dipping. I went to church at St. Gregory's, so I was there. And during the service, they did a funeral, which I've never experienced during a worship service, which was powerful. And in this church, they had this woman's ashes, and they carried, the pastor carried her ashes on his shoulders, and they danced in the church. And we danced with, with this sister. And then they have all painted around all these saints who have gone before us, and they're all dancing. So you see Martin Luther King. You see Gandhi. You see Queen uh, Elizabeth from way back then. You know, not the recent one. Not, not, not our current one. But uh, uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> the first, right? And so you have all these saints dancing all around, and we're dancing with this woman. And I think of this time in here where we are dancing with the saints. We are here with everyone, and everyone can ha have a place to be home. One of the things real quickly that I do out at the cathedral in Sacramento is that we have a homeless ministry. And there was one day when we were doing ashes for folks in the community, and I was walking around to the different tables, and I walked up to someone who I thought was clearly a man because I realized with the homeless community, they dr lots of times women dress like men so that they will not be beat up on the street. So when I walked up, I said, would you like ashes? And then suddenly she took off her hat and she took off her coat and I realized I was speaking with a trans woman. And the longer, and her name is Monica, and the longer I talked to her, the more beautiful she became in my eyes. She was just stunning. And I love that there is a church, a ministry, where everyone can be who they are. I am so proud of your ministry and what you are doing to help everyone come to the table. Because as one of my brothers was preaching to me yesterday, the shepherd goes out for all of us. If 99 are safe and yet one is out there that needs to be brought home, the shepherd searches for us all and brings us home. So my dear brothers and sisters, I cannot thank you enough for your ministry and what you do and your radical inclusion to welcome everybody to the table. And my dear friends, you all know the words, blessed be the tie that binds. Here we go. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship. John Atchison. I live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, so though I'm a PSR student, I'm only here in the Bay Area for just a couple of weeks so I could take Bishop's class. Um, and the, 
the ministries that I've seen here have had my head reeling. It's nothing like what we see in the Bible Belt. Um, you know? You know? Um, so, so, when, <laughs> so when Bishop told us that we we're going to have to get up here and tell you what was meaningful to us. And, oh, is that, is that better? Okay. Sorry. So when Bishop told us that we were going to have to get up here and tell you guys what was most meaningful to us, I was like, everything, what do I say? Um, but the common denominator, what binds every ministry and group of people that we've talked to together is um, story. They weren't, someone wasn't scared to say their story and someone had the patience um, to listen to that story. Um, and so when I go back home to, to Chattanooga, that's what I'm carrying back with me. Um, I can't be afraid or ashamed to tell my story. And I need to have the patience and the love to listen. And that's the way change starts. So humbled. Up is the first time I was going to have to bring it up. I mean, I'm like, I'm. And this baby's about to be little, too. You know? With a, with a huge soul. Um, I, um, I'm so humbled. I prepared all kinds of brainy things to say about mass, mass incarceration, no access to education, militarized state about HIV and AIDS in our neighborhoods and about all the ministries that Bishop exposed us to and talked to and led us in and had us feel the experiences of all of us who have been so marginalized, who have lived and experienced from the margins and seen as an immigrant, as a first generation immigrant and queer person that was asked to leave their Latin American home so they could be who they were and who felt wounded by the very, very Christ and community that was my home, that I escaped and left my God family behind. Um, I prepared all kinds of rationalized things to think and all I feel right now is moved to testify. <laughs> testify <honey. laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> Uh, right. uh, you know, can we feel, I, I'm feeling in my bones and in my spirit that affirmation, that um, holy proclamation that I'm back to God's family, um, that we can truly heal ourselves and with God's mercy and love to feel the power of other suffering. Yes. Yes. That in our heart, we can ease the suffering of others by stepping into their shoes, by walking, truly walking, hand in hand and embracing each other. In a country that's ruled by profit, in a neighborhood that's ruled by the, how quick we sort everything out, to take the time. To learn to listen to the whisper of spirit, to the divine guidance to detect the sorrow of others, to know that every need is not our call. <laughs> and yet, to be deeply moved to do something. You know, Bishop said, do something. <laughs> 